Hey everybody and welcome to Writing Momentum. I'm Christopher Maselli and I'm here with Gina Maselli and Hi, Renee everybody. Gutteridge. How are you guys doing? We're good. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> you know what I learned from that intro? <laughs> that long, long countdown intro? It was way too long. <laughs> I put that thing on and I'm like, I, just, I got the music going in my ear and I, I can't do anything. I gotta wait. <laughs> <laughs> So, but we're glad that everyone is, you know, uh, uh, here to join us. We see that there are some people here already watching and ready Yay. for the Q&A. Hey, Sheila, how you doing today? And uh, you, she's one of our writing moments people. We do writing moments every Wednesday at noon central. And uh, Sheila joins us. We're getting our books done, getting our stuff written, and uh, we're making some good progress. So uh, uh, why don't we all just introduce ourselves in case anyone's watching and doesn't know who we are real briefly. Just a few sentences. Gina, why don't you start? Well, uh, I'm Gina Maselli. I'm Chris's other half, and I'm a freelance writer and specializing more in ghostwriting and in, gosh, I've done a little bit of everything. So I've been working at it for about uh, 25 years now. So I'm happy to be here. All right. How about you, Renee? Renee Getteridge. I'm a novelist and screenwriter. I uh, have done a little nonfiction as well, and um, I'm excited to be here. Very cool. My name is Christopher Maselli, and I write. Uh, I do ghostwriting. I do marketing writing. I've done children's writing, and I uh, just love writing all in general. And so uh, this month, we have been kind of focusing on a theme with everything we've been doing, and that theme has been goals, setting our goals, because it's January, right? It just seems like the... Mm -hmm right thing to do. Did y'all set goals for this new year? You didn't know I was going to ask you that. That's a pop question. <laughs> <laughs> My goals well, have I been <laughs> They're what? Have been they been thwarted? <laughs> My, they have been set for me in yeah. a sense. Some have carried over. Uh, so, yeah. That's kind of life too when you're doing freelance and when you're doing jobs for other people they kind of have they do they set their, their goals for us but that's I mean that's part of the mm -hmm. that's part of what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I have set some goals for myself and some I'm honestly still working through. I'm still working on a uh, strategy and a plan for 2023. So it's the end of the month but I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to get it all done and when to get it done. So yeah, Gina and I have been yeah. talking about a lot about our goals for this coming year for writing momentum for us ourselves personally, just yeah, exactly where we're going. I think sometimes it takes a little time to figure out all what we're going to do. But uh, hey, if you're watching and you got any questions at all, feel free to post them in either the Facebook or YouTube chat areas and we'll see those. Um, but uh, other than that, we did want to show you because we are setting goals right now, we have this uh, free download that you can get. It's called Move the Needle and it's six weeks to your next major accomplishment. And this is a, it's a, a PDF where you can go in and you can fill in. It's, it's specifically for writers. And we wrote this because we have found that creating SMART goals for ourselves has really made us better writers. And those SMART goals can be finished in six week periods. Can you imagine getting your next major writing accomplishment done in six weeks? Weeks. This PDF will help you do that. It helps you create your goals, uh, break them down to where they're specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. And it's a workbook that you can go through and you can create actions for every single week of the six weeks. And you can have them on the sheet and put that right in front of you. And we found that uh, some of the people we work with absolutely love doing this and filling out this sheet. And so we wanted to make that available. And where's that at? It's at writingmomentum.com. Just go right there on the homepage to writingmomentum.com and you can download it for free. No catches. It's just because we like to help other writers. Do y'all set short-term goals when you do your writing? Mm -hmm. I definitely set them for the week and uh, for the day. So yeah. I, I set them for the week and then I've even started using a habit tracker which I, I use for my writing. I, I use that for my writing. When have I read, you know, when am I going to write this week? What did I write? How much did I write? That kind of thing when I'm working on my own projects. Yeah, that's good. That's good. We also, we also meet together uh, every week at noon. As I said earlier, we have this thing called writing moments and uh, it is a time that we get together and we write on our individual projects 
but together. We get together on Zoom. We have 15 minutes of training from myself, Gito, or Renee, and then we have 45 minutes where we just sit down and write. And as I mentioned earlier, Sheila's there. We've got, uh, there's about, about a dozen of us that have signed up and people kind of come in and out depending on when they can make it, but it's been really good because it's helped everyone. It's helped us stay accountable to one another, you know, and really get stuff done. So we'd love to have you join us. You can find out more about that at writingmoments.com. But that's not why you're here today. Why is everyone here today? We're here to answer Do tell. questions. We're here to answer questions. <laughs> I didn't, know, I didn't know who you were talking to, Chris. So yeah. audience. <laughs> anyone, anyone who wants to answer can tell us. Yeah. So here's, here's what we've done. If you're watching live, you're welcome to ask a question either on Facebook or YouTube in the comments area. And we'll see those and we can answer your questions if you have a specific question that you'd like to throw to us. Um, but otherwise, what we've done is we've gone out on the internet to Reddit and Reddit has a subreddit called the writing subreddit where all kinds of people who just love writing get together and uh, kind of encourage one another and ask questions. And there is uh, so many questions, so many questions on the subreddit. So we just chose five of our favorites that are kind of based on goal setting. And we thought we would go through those today. How does that sound? Yeah. Good. Let's go. All right. So the first one, this one is from Relative Reindeer, 658, of course. And the uh, uh, the title is, How Do I Finish What I Start? Oh, I can identify with this. <laughs> It says, I've always had trouble with this. I've always started something and got in over my head, lost interest, realized the story didn't work, wanted the story to go in a different direction or a mix of all those things. So I started to outline my works and those helped, but most of those things are still unfinished and the furthest I've gotten on a work is 50%. So they got halfway done, but not the whole way. The only thing I really finish are one shot pieces. I assume that means smaller pieces. And so they say, I'm wondering, how do I finish what I start, especially considering that I have a story I really want to tell? All right, who's got an answer for the relative reindeer? <laughs> well, Who wants I, to go first? I, you want to jump in? In there and yeah. say, um, I would really encourage you to find a writer's conference because I think there's some skills probably and I, I know this from personal experiences, I've tried different types of writing. Um, there are skills that when you start working with or hearing from more advanced writers, that they will help you make maybe make some of those connections that you're probably having trouble with. So I think that's when you're, when I'm reading, I'm kind of reading between the lines there, but I would say there's probably some training that you would find really beneficial. And I think Renee, uh, maybe you could speak to that as well, but because it sounds like we've got a fiction writer there. So I'm gonna let Renee take it from there, but I would really <laughs> encourage you to make it to a writer's conference. And we've got a great one in Oklahoma City over Labor Day called WriterCon. It's a very uh, welcoming and warm place. But I think coming there um, and, and listening to these advanced writers and advanced novelists would really help you make those connections and get to the end of your work. And besides that, I would say probably a really good coach. Take it away, Renee. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, I want to say that I don't think it's unusual when you're beginning the, the process of learning to write long form story to start, get 50% there, start something else, get 50% there. Um, that's actually developing the muscle. Um, long form story is a lot of words. And if you're starting from never having done anything to trying to slap down 90,000 words, uh, there's no surprise there that you have not gotten it all down. Um, it's, it's a learning process. It is a skill you have to develop um, it takes a long time. Learning to get out of the gate is fun. And I encourage you to do that and not feel bad about yourself for doing it. Getting 50% there is way better than getting 10% there. Um, so 
I encourage people to like keep doing that until you find that story that gets you 60% there. And you don't want to give up on the story that you've gotten 60% there. So from there, then as Gina mentioned, you've got to develop skill sets. You've got to develop your full set of muscles. Um, there's lots of them that you need to get long form story done. So, you know, it, I think people think that you can sit down and write one of these long stories first time out of the gate. It's just not plausible uh, for most people. And so I think that uh, you have to give yourself permission to learn the skills you need to get there. And part of the skill is the discipline to keep going even when it's not working. People don't necessarily understand that right off the right out of the gate, but learning to keep going when it's not working, when you feel discouraged, when you want to go another direction allows you to get that first draft down. And uh, once you get 100% there with your first draft, you're more likely to stick with the project. Yeah. And take encouragement from what you have already done. Realize that, okay, you've <laughs> sometimes I'll, I'll meet writers to say, well, all I've done is short stories. So, okay. But by by writing that short story, you've done something that most people who want to be writers never do. You've started your story, right? You've started putting something together and you finished your story. Those are two things that many people who want to be writers never do. They never start what they're doing. They never finish what they're doing. And by, by looking at something that you've done, even if it's small, even if it is just a thousand words and you say, you know, I finished that, that is a place to start. And then as Renee was saying, just work yourself up from there, right? Get, get to that 50 to percent and try to get it to 60% and then just a little further on there or from that. That's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't think anything that you write is wasted. Every time you write something, you're developing another muscle. Mm -hmm. um, so the more we all know, the three of us know that it takes a tremendous amount of writing to learn to write. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and even at the level that we've we've gotten to, we're still learning. We're still developing muscles. Um, so it is a, a lifelong learning process, which makes it fun. How many reps does it take to develop strong writing muscles? <laughs> How many reps? Yeah. So many, right? Yeah. So many. <laughs> yeah. So, All right. so many. Very good. Well, we hope that helped relative reindeer. All right. Let's go to the next one. This one is, uh, it says, beginner advice needed. So I just started writing a novel, novel and frankly, and, and I'm very bad at it, frankly. The problem is that every day I'm learning new things about everything from a different perspective like setting, tone, etc. And they can be used other ways which never came to my mind. And this hinders my writing as I think about implementing and trying those ideas. So how do you guys keep track of all of this wealth of ideas from analyzing books, craft books, forum discussions, and then going on to complete that first rough draft? How, how do you keep track of all this head knowledge? Let's say you go to that writer's conference or you, you're watching a bunch of YouTube videos, you're watching these Q&As today and there's all this advice coming out there. How do you actually get that together in a, in a I guess, pliable way to make sure that, okay, I can now go ahead and, and get my writing done? What do you think, Gina? Well... I, I think, again, this person is clearly writing a, uh, looking at a fiction book, a yeah. fiction story. So they're pulling all these different elements together. And from my experience, you have to give yourself permission to be bad. You have to be, like Renee was talking about, the muscle. As you work and as you keep trying, I think different muscles just get stronger. And as soon as you get one strong, then another one will need to be strengthened. And uh, over time, the whole body will become stronger. But I think you have to give yourself permission just to be bad and just keep at it. Like Renee was saying, you've just got to keep, keep working at it keep enjoying the process. And I would say that if you're, if you're reading so much that it is stifling your creativity and stifling your process to the point that you feel like I can't do anything because it's all just terrible, I would probably say put the books away for a little while and just enjoy the process. 
It's kind of like information well, overload, right? It's it's it, yeah. it, so many times. I mean, we can do that with anything, right? I do that all the time when I'm researching like something new that I'm interested in. I will start. I'll watch videos and I'll read blogs and I'll, I'll get other people's opinions. And I'll, before I know it, this thing that I wanted to research, I know a lot about it, but it's almost like because I, you know, I've worked myself into being paralyzed and not being able to actually do anything with it. And so uh, I think this is one of those situations where. I would say, you know, write that that cruddy first draft. Just get it done. Don't worry about getting everything right. And then once you've got that first draft down, you can go back through and start to look at everything and you'll see where your weaknesses are and where your strengths are and you can build it up from there. What would you add to that, Renee? Well, I agree. I was going to say um, the key word there is rough in the draft. Um <laughs> And I have explained it uh, like this. When you're writing fiction, you it's like you have all these plates spinning. And if you've ever seen those plate spinners, they're pretty amazing. You know, they'll start one plate and they'll start another. And it's a really amazing talent. And I always think of plate spinning when I think of keeping track of everything you have to do in fiction, you know, setting and tone and dialogue and inner monologue, all this stuff. So, um, you know, you've got to learn gradually to keep this plate spinning. Um, I would add to whatever, what all you have said, uh, both of you, which was excellent, that um, I think you've got to be reading fiction uh, nonstop. That is, uh, so if there's the foreground information, which is the craft books and the writer conferences and all the things that you're, you're, the data you're getting, the background information is your subconscious learning uh, fiction through reading. It's unbelievable how much you'll pick up just from reading fiction. And it's unbelievable how many people want to write a novel who've never read one. <laughs> and <laughs> right. I come across it a lot. Uh, and so you have to be reading the thing that you're wanting to write. And you might say, well, I'm not a reader. Well, get an audio book or uh, you know, at the very least be watching movies, learn story, but I really recommend actually reading novels, even if you're a slow reader, which I am, I'm a very slow, people are astonished at how slow I read. Um, I think it's because I just like every word that's been written on the page. And I know that some <laughs> author has spent a lot of time picking that word and I don't want to skip it. Um, but, but I'm a slow reader and I don't get to read a lot during the year, but I do, I do read and that will always contribute to your skills. Yeah, really that goes for anything that you're writing, right? It doesn't, it's not just fiction. If you're, if you're wanting to write nonfiction, you need to be reading books in that genre. If you want to write a theological book, you need to be reading books in that genre, right? Whatever you're, you're writing, or if you're writing a magazine piece, how many people have you ever run into that want to write a piece for a magazine, but they've never read anything from that magazine, right? And so we need to make sure that whatever it is that we're writing for, that we are reading that kind of material. Yeah? Yeah, that's good yes, stuff. Yes, I would even, Chris, you have this may be a little bit off talk, a topic, but I know you have, when you go to, to write for a specific genre or for a magazine, you have outlined that you've taken a book and outlined it, one that you really yeah. liked. And when I say outline, you'll, you'll notice, I know, cause we've had these conversations where you'll say, well, by this chapter, this is happening or by mm -hmm. this point this is what's happening. And so, uh, that's from children's books all the way to fiction or nonfiction. You really, and not just reading them, but really taking the time to find that one that really speaks to you and then really kind of dissect it. Yeah, I... I... What, yeah, I, I remember when I first started writing um, books for middle graders, one of the first things I did is I went to a local bookstore. This is when we have bookstores all over, right? <laughs> I went to a local bookstore. I didn't have Amazon at the time. And I went and I found all the best sellers in the the kind of middle grade, the age group, and um, they, were, they were for boys, so the, they're written for boys. And I, I just bought a whole stack of them. And then I mm -hmm. brought them back to my office and I'd read through them and I would outline the book as I read it. I'd outline what the characters were doing and I started to see similarities. And then those craft books really came to life because I, I saw, oh, this is how they're build, putting that together. And then when I went to start writing my own, I, I had already kind of, you know, 
outlined six other books. They weren't mine. <laughs> they were someone else's, right? But I had outlined other books. So I understood how that structure worked. And that was a great learning exercise. Um, I mm. highly recommend that. Yeah, dissect. Dissect the stuff like, you know, yeah, the, the frogs in school. My friend calls it reverse engineering. And I love yes. that term as well. Um, good, good visual. Yes. Well, yeah. And once you start doing that, you do start seeing those similarities. And I know uh, there have been many times, and Renee, I would imagine that if we talk screenwriting and you would bring up like, what are your favorite movies? You could probably say, man, I loved how they did this because that led to this or that was this. And there was this, this whole thing that I think just as a casual viewer, we miss or a casual reader, we miss. But all of a sudden, when you really start thinking analytically about what some some masterpiece and what's being done, you see it in a whole nother light and in a deeper way. So I think, well, we always kind of joke once you start awesome. doing this for a profession, you can no longer enjoy things. just for the of it. <laughs> That's very it's true, though, true. isn't it? You, yeah, you see it totally like, differently. It's like you see the matrix. You see, you see the way the code is <laughs> built. <laughs> even, even in nonfiction, everything, everything yeah. you read now, it's all data consumption and yeah. analyzing mm -hmm. and reverse engineering, even when you're trying not to. Um, but yeah, I think Janina, that's right. And, uh, but it's, it's all fun, you know, and it, mm -hmm. just don't let it, it be discouraging. Because one mm -hmm. of the things that I've seen with people is that they completely psych themselves out on on that. And then suddenly you go from analyzing to, well, I'm never going to be able to achieve this. I'm never going to be this good. Um, and then the next thing you know, they've never written another word. So you've got to keep your mental health uh, and emotional health, uh, uh, you know, strong when you're doing all this or you really can, uh, I guess, get super discouraged. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to continue in the vein of uh, uh, some of these goals in that. This is an interesting one. This is about word count. So this is from Lieutenant Commander Carter. And Lieutenant Commander Carter says, I want to make a reward system for hitting certain word count goals. Uh, and so I, he says, hey, I'm just trying to write a book over here for fun, but I want to motivate myself to keep going. I'm thinking of giving myself a small reward for a thousand words, maybe a medium reward for every five to 10,000 beyond that. And then I want to treat myself to Scrivener if I get to 40,000 words. Just wondering if anyone had any suggestions. How can Lieutenant Commander Carter bump up their <laughs> word count? It seems well, like he's got a good idea. system. <laughs> <laughs> no. I love this yeah. idea. I would say it really kind of depends on what speaks to him. So what what would speak to you? What would speak to you, Lieutenant Carter, for um, just encouraging you? You know, is it a a day trip somewhere where you get to go and do something special with, uh, you know, someone that you don't, you know, would require you to just kind of stop everything and just go do this special trip or would it be a, a fun toy or something, you know? I, I mean, I would I, love to say, I, I don't know what it is, but for me, I do love to take and keep track of my word count and somehow that is kind of enough, uh, that is motivating for me, but I don't know, that's probably just my yeah. own... I don't do it by word count. I usually do it by time. So I'll, I'll be like, okay, if I can focus here for 45 minutes and I know that I'll get, you know, decent word count in that time. But if I just focus and keep writing for 45 minutes, then when the 45 minutes is done, I can go, you know, play a quick video game or do something else I want to do. And then I jump back into it and I'll, I'll keep doing that throughout the day. That's one of the ways I work is I'll, I'll, I'll do small timers throughout the day. And that's my motivation. Renee, what's yours? Well, I have a small problem of rewarding myself when I don't deserve it uh, or when I've utterly failed. <laughs> so I, I don't think the reward system works very well for me. Um, but <laughs> I'm usually pretty motivated to, to get 
myself in front of the computer. So, you know, that that's just comes with the discipline of years of doing this. You know, I can get, I can get there. But um, but what but, do you yeah. do when you have a job that you're like, oh, man, I do not want to work on this today. This is not the piece I want to write. And, and what if you don't even have a deadline, right? Because the deadline sometimes will motivate us whether we have a reward or not. But what if you don't have a deadline, you still got to get something done. How do you reward yourself? What do you do? How do you push through? Well, I probably do more of the, okay, I'm going to work two hours on this and then I'm going to work an hour on the thing that I really am loving. Oh, so you reward um, yourself with more work, <laughs> but it's the kind of work you want to do. More work. But, yeah, <laughs> because I, you know, there are things that I really like working on. And of course, there there are things that I don't dislike working on, but are tougher or require more ba- brain power from me. Uh, that's always the thing. The, the harder the brain power, the <laughs> worse it is for me. Probably true for everybody. Um, so yeah, I, I try to do something at the end of it. I guess that's what you guys do is do something at the end of it that, that I really enjoy. Um, but yeah, as far as reward by work, I mean, if I'm having a tough writing day, I go and buy myself Starbucks. So that is not, I don't think. <laughs> no one said chocolate. I thought for sure someone would start this off by saying, <laughs> I've got a bunch of chocolate over here. <laughs> there she is. See, there we go. I just eat this at will. There's no reward <laughs> oh, that's... to it. It's okay. just, I just eat it when I want to. So I don't know. I'm not the person to ask on this. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, no, as soon as you said, "Well, I'm not, I'm not really, you know, the best for rewarding myself because I reward myself when I don't mean to or don't need to," and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's where I kind of live, Renee." So we're right there together. <laughs> yeah. We've seen. I've got a drawer down here. I can't really do it, but I have this little, you know, decoy for the family of this little chocolate <laughs> jar. But down here is an entire drawer. Of food and snacks. I actually did that at one of the places I worked. We had these uh, this big filing cabinet that sat next to my desk. And you open the top drawer and behind the files, there was probably a f- square foot of space that was licorice and candy and Snickers and all kinds of stuff. I just kept it in there and <laughs> every day. And then I had the little decoy on my desk, a little dish candy dish that of hard candies that people could have when they came in. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I like he, he I earned like a reputation. <laughs> I don't know what he you're talking it. about. <laughs> All right, that's uh, so. That's how we recommend making a reward system, Lieutenant Commander Carter. We hope you are promoted soon. All right, venture far. What are the best books for learning how to write? I'm talking about inspirational, informative, maybe something that flat out tells you how to write. What has helped you or other writers find your tune? Mixing metaphors, we got music and uh, along with the writing. Uh, you do, let, let's why don't we share one of our favorite writing books? How about that? Yeah, Renee, why okay. don't you start? Uh, one, okay, I've got several, well. but I'm gonna go fast. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> the fire and fiction, Donald Moss. This is the one I've heard you recommend the most Fire and Fiction it's by really good. Donald fire Moss. Fiction, uh, revision and editing, James Scott Bell. Uh, I haven't read that Stein one. on writing, Solstein. Solstein. How to write funny. Only write, read this if you That looks like a funny. bunch of different authors on that one. Wow. Yeah, several authors. Uh, writing the breakout novel, another Donald Moss book. And uh, this is an old one, but I've always thought it was very good, especially for beginners. Um, How Fiction Works, Oakley Hall. Very good. That's just a few. Few of my <laughs> now you <laughs> now I feel like mine's not gonna have as much impact because I've got one, <laughs> but <laughs> well, this is accumulated it's... over some years. I understand. I understand. Actually, one I didn't bring is Story by uh, Robert McKee. That was a very mm-hmm. good book that teaches you how to do story. Mm-hmm. Gina, very long book. Very thick. <laughs> yeah. I would say um, what one of the first ones that really spoke to me was Keys to Great Writing. Who's that by? Houston Great Writing by Stephen Wilbers. And uh, it's just a really, really good book. But then um, 
going to write again i'll plug the writers conferences going to a writers conference really worked and then one of the things that really helped me and this is uh beyond books was just actually teaching writing working with kids on learning helping them learn to write it is amazing how as you study and then teach others how to do it how it will um just work into your own writing it, because again the more you read it and the more you study it the more you recognize it and so that that's been so i encourage people you know if you want to volunteer at your local library or something you want to get involved with kids just helping out and that kind of thing it really will make you a better writer as much as reading will i think helping kids succeed in writing is a great way to learn to write better as your as well that's good. Hey, if you're watching and you've got a favorite writing book, go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll give it a shout out here. One of my favorites is 20 Master Plots by Ronald Tobias. I don't think it even looks like this anymore. I think they redesigned the cover. This is one I got um, uh, from the Writer's Digest book club years and years ago when they used to do a book club. And this one really affected me because it has 20 of the plots that he identifies as some of the main plots that are used today. And if you look at the first children's books that I wrote, which were for middle graders, they are the plots that are in this book. I was using the 3X structure for each of those plots to learn how to do it, and it was really fun. So that's 20 master plots, Ronald Tobias. All right, that's good stuff. Oh, Y'all just gave me a whole bunch of stuff we got to write. <laughs> <laughs> Read <laughs> and write. Read. <laughs> All right. Next question. I think this is the last one. All right. Where do I find freelance writing jobs? And it says that uh, Stephanie Land recently posted that, that that is how she got her start in writing for a living. And I asked her and she said, well, she found jobs that would pay how to write, but that wasn't enough information and not a lot of help. So any information or assistance would be greatly appreciated. Frequent dog 4989 says... Thank you. Gina, where can Frequent Dog find freelance writing jobs to start that career? Well, I think that's the key is, is starting the career. So I started my career by people around me that needed a, write, needed a writer. And so I just offered to do it. And many of those projects I did for free or for very low cost, just to get my feet wet, just to uh, kind of earn some writing credits there. So I started there. I know there are sites like freelance.com and freelancer.com, and uh, I think it's freelance and then freelancer, and then also Fiverr. I know there are writers that work on there, um, but there are different places looking for writers uh, that you can do a search for. They're looking for uh, content writers. They're looking for blogs just to fill out their blogs. And, you know, don't despise small beginnings is what I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not gonna earn big bucks right out of the gate. Learn the craft, start small. And even in your town, I would even say in your town, if there are people, if you know somebody, for instance, who is a uh, web designer, you know somebody who does web design, connect with them to, to let them know, hey, I want to be a freelance writer. I want to do some writing. So if you have a client who needs their website written, please keep me in mind. You know, make those connections because that, that does turn in to something. And word of mouth has been my biggest uh, has been the biggest way that I've earned, I have gained more clients. Networking. No, no networking. introvert wants to think we have to network, <laughs> but it really does. It really does help. Networking can make a big difference. Ingrid says Upwork is one that she recommends, but also LinkedIn jobs where you can add search parameters. Yeah, uh, Ingrid, you're right. Upwork is really, that's a, another really good one. And you know, I just ran into someone the other day who said that they found a lot of jobs on LinkedIn. So the, that's a um, really good suggestion. I have not used... Mm -hmm. Uh, LinkedIn myself to find jobs. I, I've had people contact me, but I've not used it to find writing jobs, but now it kind of makes me want to sometimes, yeah? Renee, have you ever had to look for a job through through a site or anything, or do you, your, your career is a little different because you've, you've done mostly fiction uh, in the screenwriting, right? Uh, 
Right. Yeah. I haven't, it's just different in that world. Um, I mean, there's, there are a few exceptions, but mostly it's, you're selling your original stories. Um, I, I had ghostwriting jobs. I'm not in fiction and nonfiction, but, um, it, you know, those came from word of mouth as well. And way, way down the road after many years of being involved and working for a lot of people. So it does take some time to build up your reputation as a reliable writer. And, and, but once you get there, then, you know, it's nice to have somebody recommend you. Yeah, very good. So you know what you could do is if you're looking for jobs is you could start to set goals. And guess what? You're not going to believe this, but we happen to have a free goal setting <laughs> work uh, ebook for you. If you don't have it yet, it's called Move the Needle. And this is six weeks to your next major accomplishment. This is a free ebook. You can get it at writingmomentum.com. And uh, we hope that uh, you'll just enjoy it. It's a, You can work on through it and um, put your SMART goals in there and break it down week by week so that you know, where's that page? There it is. So that you can know what action you need to take. I've, I've known some writers that'll take and they'll just put in, we talked about word count. They'll put in the word count that they want to hit every single week of those six weeks. And then they'll say, okay, did I achieve that this week? And that just keeps them on task, on goal the whole time. If you did that and you said, look, I want to do, let's say, what, 5,000 words a week? Is that too much? That sounds like a lot. But if you want to do 5,000 words a week, you would have a 30,000 word manuscript done by the time six weeks were over. That is totally possible, by the way. If you wrote 1,000 words a day, take about an hour, hour, hour or two out each day, write 5,000 words, you could totally have a 30,000 word book in six weeks. That's kind of crazy to think. And I, I always, I love doing the math like that because it makes it all seem just so much more possible because I think sometimes we don't break it down like that. And if you want to have uh, some help and accountability, please join myself and Gina and Renee for writing moments as well as Sheena, uh, Sheila and Ingrid who uh, made some comments early in this chat. We all are writing together at Writing Moments, which is at writingmoments.com. We do this every week at noon central. And what we do is we get together on Zoom and we have 15 minutes of training. And then we have 45 minutes where we just write on our individual projects together. And in that way, we start getting stuff done. We've already had some success stories come out of that and it's been really good. Do you all like Writing Moments? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I really it, enjoy we get hearing. stuff done too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And I, I love hearing of the people who show up and the people who come and hearing about what they're working on and hearing about what they're learning. It's just, it's really a lot of fun. It's really a lot of fun. Uh, well, I have a question for you guys. I, I oh. didn't tell you all I was gonna do this. I've got a pop question for you. <laughs> all right. What is either the best thing that you have read recently or seen that you can say, man, the writing on that was really good. I'm going to, I just want to hear, like, what is something <laughs> that you guys, I'm asking you both. I uh, see so you made, you made us, uh, oh, no, I, I know. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm going for the screenwriting, Renee, because we just went and saw the movie Missing, which is a uh, really well plotted <laughs> movie and it's it's just it's 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 good solid plot good writing uh, as far as that goes um I really enjoyed that one if you're looking for like a lesson in plot with twists and that sort of thing it's a good solid solid movie to go see missing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gina, oh i tried to think <laughs> on I the read spot good books last year um and but a lot of theological books um so I don't think that's what we're looking for. Um, uh, you know, I've loved Yellowstone. Um, the TV series. The TV series Yellowstone. And the park, uh, probably. Yeah, yeah, the, the park. park. <laughs> I'm a bit of the park. I'm sure it's way lovelier and more peaceful than the show. <laughs> Um, it's a fascinating show. I would say it's definitely rated R, uh, but it uh this season has not been as great um i think the 
first and second season were really, um, I think, just the topic of it and learning about land ownership in that part of the country was just super fascinating. And so, you know, it's hard to go that strong for five seasons, I guess. But um, the dialogue was really great and just learning about cowboy life and stuff like that. Um, that has has been one of my favorites of things we've been watching. Um, so yeah, Sean and I watch a lot of documentaries, I, I guess because I live in story a lot, fictional story a mm -hmm. lot during the, the day that when I get a chance to examine true story, it's just even more fascinating to me. So um, mm -hmm. anyway, I don't know, guys. I I freeze up on questions like that. As soon as we get off, I'm gonna have the whole list, and uh, so and I'm actually I'm going on vacation here in a couple three or four weeks, and I'm I'm all nervous because I want a perfect beach read, and so I've been like looking through the New York Times bestsellers list and just like you know, oh my gosh, what's it gonna be? You know, I don't know. So I've been a little nervous, Millie, trying to find the perfect book. So if, if y'all have recommendations, um, I would love to hear them because I just want to find that perfect beach read and I just need it. And I don't think it's the Prince Harry book y'all. I don't think that's going to be it. It's number one, but I don't think that's what I want to take to the beach with me. Post it in the comments there. I, one of my favorite authors has become a uh, Minka Kent and she's out of Oklahoma and she does a lot of their, their thrillers, but they're very light thrillers. Um, and I really have enjoyed her stuff. They're kind of like beach reads, uh, and I've been, I've enjoyed her stuff. If if you don't find one, check out one of hers. And she's got a bunch okay. on Kindle Unlimited too. Gina, we got to throw it back at you then. Why don't you close this out by telling us what you have read recently that you just thought was awesome sauce? You know what? I am. I, I'm going to sound so educated here when I say this, but. <laughs> I have been reading because um, I read with my kids. And so we have been reading the Princess Bride book. Remember the movie? Everybody knows the movie. Okay. Yeah. The book is not only really well done, but it is the only book that, um, you know, in the movie, everybody knows the movie, but you know, in the movie, how it starts out where the grandfather is reading this story to the son or to the grandson. That's how the book is written. The book is written as though the author is telling about this story that his father or grandfather read to him and he's decided to make it into an adaptation of it or a not adaptation, what is it? It's a, um, a condensed version of it. So the whole thing is written where it breaks that, it comes out of the kind of in theater they talk about I think breaking the third wall or something where they talk directly to the speaker. This book does that. It's, it's fa I think it's fascinating and it's a classic. So I think it's a classic. It's a modern classic, but it's still, it's a classic fit as a, as under the classic thing. So every I man sound, thinks I, that's a classic. <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> it has to be. I, it, it, it almost ruined my really wedding, fun. but that's a story for another time. <laughs> oh, that's maybe next, <laughs> maybe the next Q&A. That'll be the first Q we, we went for. I have strong feelings about that story. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. We'll leave it with we'll leave it with a hook and a piece of suspense. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. Please go to writingmomentum.com, get that free goal guide. And uh, then also you can grab uh, join us for writing moments and we will do that next Wednesday. We look forward to seeing you there. Until next time, remember what guys? Together, Together we have writing momentum. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. We botched that. <laughs>